A very warm welcome to you to this 4th of April 2021. It's Easter Sunday and Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. We're gathered together to worship with words from Psalm 67, which begins and ends with these refrains. God, be merciful unto us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. And it concludes, God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall be in awe of him. We're going to start our service this morning with that arousing hymn 419, Thine Be the Glory. to prayer with words from Psalm 118 and Colin Davidson will read for us verses 19 to 24 of Psalm 118. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Amen. Thank you, Colin. Let us pray. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome death and open the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, being dead to sin 
and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Risen Lord, we are the Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We are the Easter people come to worship, released from tombs of pain and doubt and fear and death into the freedom of this new day and its promise of hope fulfilled. We are the Easter people emerged into the brightness of faith, blinking, questioning, wandering, hoping. Come to us into the garden of our lives and touch all that is barren and wasted and dried with your healing hand. Forgive our half-lived lives, our broken promises and our failed kindness. Call to us by our name that we might turn from all that limits and burdens us and lift us up into forgiveness and freedom. Open the gateways of our hearts and minds and call us out into your world to be, embraced by your unfailing and renewing mercy. Today, in silence, prayer and song. May we encounter Jesus and his grace, for we are the Easter people, and Alleluia is our song through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Come, stand among us, that we might see you by our side, that we might hear you call our names, that we might now, on this heady day of joy, be still right now and know that you are God. We give you heartfelt thanks from our full hearts. We bring you our prayers this day for a world needing Easter. We pray for those locked in by hurt and loneliness and grief. We pray for those locked in by addiction and hunger and poverty. We pray that we, inspired by your good news this Easter day, may bring our practical care and help to those who call out and to those who are silent. And in our lived out faith and love, may we show no partiality as we bring what hope we can to those in need. Today, indeed, we pray for our nation, for our Queen, and for those who shape the future of our country and our world. In times of uncertainty, make us confident with kindness. In times of frustration, make us gentle with vision. Help us to be the Easter people, bringing light into our world. Lord Jesus Christ, for the church we pray, that in our work and witness, we may be generous in our believing and joyful in our serving. Help us to blend tradition and newness, to keep our faith and work a power for good and a dynamic for reconciliation and renewal. This Easter day, this new beginning, this time of lifting up, 
Lift up our heads and hearts. Lift up our eyes and our voices. For our Lord Jesus Christ is risen. And there is hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we thank you for giving us Jesus. And that today we might remember him with bread and with wine and with jubilation. So we pray together with the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, all after, over these uh, recent weeks, we've been hearing from Drama Kirk, uh, from the Rhyming Bible, written by uh, Bob Hartman, uh, a, a variety of excerpts from that book, uh, published by SPCK. That's the Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge, and they're performed under license uh, to that publishing house. And today we hear Drama Kirk reciting the last of our excerpts, No More Crying. No More Crying, from the Rhyming Bible by Bob Hartman. When someone you love dies, your heart deep inside. You miss them so much, you just want to cry. When Jesus died, all his friends hurt too. Peter and John and the rest of the crew were gutted and just didn't know what to do with the sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. Day one passed, then two, and on the third day, Mary went early to visit the grave. She went with her friends, with spice and perfume, to anoint the dead body that lay in the tomb. The day hadn't dawned, they walked in the gloom. They were sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. But when they arrived, they were filled with dismay. The tomb had been opened, the stone rolled away. They ran and told Peter, they ran and told John. They'd stolen his body. Jesus is gone! They've taken him somewhere. Don't know what to do. Still sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. So Peter set off, but John, with a burst, sped straight past his friend and reached the tomb first. He didn't dare enter, just stuck his head in. Only burial cloths? where Jesus had been. What's happened, he wondered, his head in a spin, sighing, goodbyeing and crying. Then Peter arrived and, without delay, walked into the tomb. And where Jesus lay were neatly stacked sheets and the cloth from his head. Like Jesus had woken and made up his bed, was it possible Jesus was no longer dead? No more sighing, goodbyeing and crying? Peter and John went home, all amazed, but Mary remained and was suddenly dazed when two angels appeared, shining bright in the grave at the foot and the head where once Jesus lay. Where did they take him, was all she could say, sighing, goodbyeing and crying. But before they could answer, she heard a voice speak. Why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? 
It's the gardener, she thought. So she quickly replied, It's Jesus, she answered. Jesus, who died. If you've taken his body, please say where he lies. Sighing, goodbyeing and crying. Mary, he said. Oh, what a surprise. It was Jesus behind her. Jesus, alone. Teacher, she gasped. But he told her to go. Tell all my friends what you've seen. They must know that I'm no longer dead. I have risen. And so, no more sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. No more sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. I hope you enjoyed that as we think about both communion today, but especially Easter Day. And you might have noticed that we haven't got our candles today. We've been following through with our candles all through Advent and Epiphany and Lent, just to bring us that extra little bit of cheer. But today, of course, being Easter Day, we've no need of the candles because we have the cheer of Christ himself on this Easter Sunday, remembering that he's risen And he's with us in our hearts, bringing us joy and bringing us cheer. And so I hope that we might be encouraged as we think on these things. Well, our children are now going to go to Sunday Live. Our Sunday leaders should be ready for them. Our Sunday Live leaders should be ready for them. So I pray that you'll be blessed as you enjoy that together. And we'll catch you later again. Until then, God bless and take care. Cheers now. We're going to listen also now to a reading of the Gospel of Matthew. And Marilyn Henderson is going to lead us in that reading of Matthew 28, the last chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and the first 10 verses. Marilyn. Reading Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10, from the New International Version. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And then may God bless you as these readings of his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Marilyn. Now, in preparation for our communion a little bit later, we're going to recite the Apostles' Creed together, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, for you are our stronghold and our Redeemer. Amen. In our Bible reading today, we are exposed to fear and joy. We're on hallowed ground. And I don't want to dilute uh, the uh, passage we have there with my own comments too much, but I wonder in what circumstances we might have felt anything approximating what those first Easter people experienced. In what circumstances might you experience both fear and elation? In circumstances such as anticipating a child, perhaps? And then the new arrival, the excitement of a new life, and then telling everybody about it? Or maybe in more mundane circumstances, a driving test, and then passing, and again, wanting to let everybody know as you share the news. Or anticipating a roller coaster, maybe at Blackpool or M&Ds, perhaps as it climbs higher and higher and higher up to that precipice almost before setting off at an increasing rate of knots with that feeling in the pit of our stomach. And then finally, when we eventually get off, perhaps with wobbly legs underneath us, maybe you're ready to do it again? Maybe not. Or maybe telling people of your experience. You've just got to see this, both the fear and the elation in the middle of a similar circumstance. We have two of these extremes in our reading today. And if you've been following along with the Holy Week services uh, led from St. John's, then perhaps you've had a bit of a sense of the story as we've listened to various facets of it throughout this week. This morning we're considering Matthew's account in isolation. Because he relates that there was a, a, an angel coming to roll away the stone that was accompanied by an earthquake. And the, st the stone is dislodged. And the soldiers on guard, normally under uh, circumstances in which they'd have been in good heart, with, in any other circumstances certainly, they are quaked and shocked by everything that has taken place. They're shaking in their boots. It's as if they were struck dead by the events that are unfurling in front of them because of their incredible fear of something they've never experienced before. Yet, to the women who attended the grave, the angel said, do not fear. And perhaps as a consequence, when they left, they left with a, a mixture of fear, but also excitement. Notice in verse 8, So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. But there's more to this encounter. While yet on the way, Jesus met them. And instead of his customary greeting, as we see in some of the other Gospels, that we might recall that he gave to his other disciples, which was usually Peace, have no fear. Notice what happens. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Rejoice! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. So quite a different uh, encounter again, and certainly different from what the other apostles might have felt on their account, encounter with Christ. And perhaps that advent of that messenger coming and telling them not to fear and giving them the good news of his resurrection was enough to put them in a state that was ready to receive him and receive that command to rejoice, as indeed they did. But that's not the end of the encounter. In verse 10 we read that then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee and there they will see me. They moved 
from fear to fear and excitement to rejoicing and worshipping. What kind of fear might he need to help them calm at this point? The fear to tell others what had happened? The fear to witness even to his own disciples, people that they they knew well, or maybe even knew a little bit too well. Did they expect to face the disbelief of them all and the doubts of Thomas in particular? Did their excitement, and especially this encounter, give them the nerve that they needed to see through this commission that Jesus had given them, and beyond. Although we never read that part, not just yet, they would have a great commission to fulfill. A great commission that has brought the gospel all the way down through the generations to our own generation, and which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail next week. But the words that were ringing in their ears that they would recount later were simply, rejoice, and then do not be afraid. Are we excited by it? Are we excited by this Easter morning? But are we also filled with maybe just a little bit of fear especially when challenged to share the gospel with others. This we we hold in common with every generation for the past 2,000 years. But, but, Jesus has risen. He is risen indeed. Rejoice. Do not be afraid. Amen. Now, we're going to sing our communion hymn together as a church, wherever it is that we might worship. And usually usually this will be the time when we would bring the elements out and place them on the table. So if you haven't already done so, please do make some quick preparations of bread and wine or suitable substitutes so that we might be able to enjoy communion together today. We're going to sing a Charles Wesley hymn, which hopefully the words will come up on the screen. Help us to help each other, Lord. Help us to help each other, Lord. Each other's cross to bear. Let each other helping hand afford and feel each other's care up into the living head let us in all things grow and by thy sacrifice be led the fruits of love to show drawn by the magnet of thy love let all our hearts agree and ever towards each other move, and ever move towards Thee. This is the bond of perfectness, Thy spotless charity.
as we come to the table of our Lord, a table of Jesus Christ himself for those who love and who follow him. We remember him until he returns. And this Easter morning, as we remember him in this particular way, it's hard perhaps to think back on the events of the Last Supper itself, because today we're full of the resurrection. But so Jesus told us that he would drink new wine in the kingdom of his Father. And so we have the delight of sharing in this table that represents both his covenant and that's a new wine that we will yet drink all together in heaven itself. We remember him until he comes. The Apostle Paul tells us what's called the institution of that meal, the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, this is penned. The tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself. For on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, we take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and offer him our thanks and praise let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you as the God of comfort, the God of mercy, the God of life. And we acknowledge you to be the Lord at all times. We, we honor you for your greatness and your goodness, for the joy that you've brought into the world by means of Christ through his life, his death, and especially his resurrection and all that he purchased for us humbly us, created in your likeness and your image, but now freed from the enslavement of sin through your only Son. Because you gave him to be a human being just like us in all things except by of sin, and that by his death and resurrection he might again bring life into the world. And so on this day of light, we remember the past stories of hope and peace and joy and love. We remember Christ himself. We remember him in our hearts. Even though we cannot contemplate the height and the depth and the breadth and the length of your love, yet you have showed him to us. You have showed these things to us in Christ himself. And so we come to this table which he's left us to remember him until he comes again. We look for communion with you from earth in heaven itself, joined in the Spirit. We ask that you might send your Spirit to make us one family in Christ as we give thanks to you and join with the angels and the saints in the joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Send then your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that we who eat and drink at this holy table might share the life of Christ our Lord, this renewed Easter life, Pour out your Spirit upon the whole world and bring in your new creation. Gather your church together from the east to the west, the north to the south, the very ends of the earth. And may peace and justice be revealed that we with all your people of every language, race and nation might share in the banquet that you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, all honor and glory are yours forever. Amen.
These are holy things for the holy people of God. Only Jesus Christ is holy. We are made holy in him. Now, according to the holy institution, the example, the very command of our Lord, and as a memorial of him, we do this. Who, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, and his blood, which was shed for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving, even rejoicing. For Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find refuge in him body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. blood of Christ for the remission of sins. The blood of Christ for the remission of sins. The blood of Christ for the remission of sins. told in another place in scripture that on the evening of that first Easter day the disciples were gathered together once more in an upper room and Jesus on that occasion told them peace have no fear and so let us in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ grant one another and extend to one another the peace of Christ the peace of Christ the peace of Christ the peace of Christ The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, having come to the table, a table that is shared in heaven and on earth, in this thin place of Easter morning, where all the saints of the past, the present, and yes, even the future, might gather together and bless your holy name. May we draw together with our families and our friends the very church of Christ, wherever and whenever she is to be found. We give thanks to you for your goodness to us. We pray that that blessing which you have given to us and laid upon our hearts might be one that without fear we might share with others this Easter day. So be with us, continue with us, and bless us. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Redeemer and King. Amen. We're going to conclude our service this morning singing the hymn, Come People of the Risen King.
we go into this week with the Easter blessings of God to carry us through, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you all, both now and evermore.